Good morning. It's that time of the day again to um, do the Oracle Report. Brought to you by my host studio, Mestizo. Uh, this morning they brought me breakfast, so I'm having my uh, chia oatmeal and eggs and my morning healthy smoothie. I'm trying to be good <laughs> because there's a baker that I hang out with at night and he don't make me be so good because I eat everything. he. I have to taste everything he makes and that's, you know, an excuse. I'm sticking with it. So when you're in Vilcabama, Governor Stiso, new menus, I'm happy to uh, support them and love them and be a part of the family that is a mixture of just the coolest, craziest uh, compadres and expats um, in Ecuador. So, Mestizo. And this week, oh, I'm very excited about the Healing Alliance. It was the Optimized Life event I did for an outside retreat. And it's hard to get people to travel to your country. And I'm out here not on the beaten path. And so when people want to come, I just kind of go, hmm, you got to call it. What, what do you here for? And I have just met someone this morning from Encinitas that is, uh, came here. So I'm excited that uh, they're here and they need some healing alignment. So perfect timing. And uh, the healers that are here are a pretty amazing group. And I've brought out the ones that nobody really knows about, uh, like bee sting medicine, which is great for arthritis um, and any neuro or muscular issues. Um, Rape, which is a cleaner uh, connector. It burns like hell. I don't like it, but it's, it works. Um, and um, uh, Qigong, which our brother Charles is bringing as well. And essential oils and making your own essential oil that is in alignment to what your body is needing. And you know how to muscle test that. And we'll check that and do that here. And then the body therapies. We have some really great um, body alignment that helps you correct your body instead of you hunching over and causing the pain in your body over and over again and having to get a massage all over the uh, repetitively, you correct the body posture so that you can relax into sitting properly, which is nice because I'm sitting on a bench now because I don't really need a chair or comfort or cushions because I've learned how to hold my body properly and do what I need to move unless I have to move the mic. Then I'll play with that. Um, what else have I got? Oh, skio. Oh my God. If you haven't had a skio analysis, that's your full body analysis without blood work or MRI. You can get it all done on a, a skio device, which, um, a woman from, was a nurse for the King of Iran, uh, and ran their nursing program years ago, uh, is a holistic healer for 30, oh, I think closer to 50 years. Um, and has a beautiful clinic that she has built here and brought from uh, Southern California. Um, so we got that and it's Equinox, which is the time you can balance an egg on its end. So we're going to be doing that all day in the garden here and hanging out and enjoying just, you know, chill time. And it's a, I got it green and it's flowering. And so we want to celebrate connecting ourselves back to the earth and getting in alignment with this planet, which is what we have not been in alignment with. So that's the commercials. Um, I want to just open this day by thanking our ancestors and my grandparents and grandmothers, grandfathers who have guided me and been so supportive to giving me information. They know my desire to seek out um, and get the answers. And I've had a a download upload all week long. Uh, I think from the from last Tuesday evening, that's when it started, and I just went, oh, "Okay, let's look at everything again." And when I mean everything, I, I'm looking at purpose and why are we here and what are we doing. I do want to go through the news, but we're going to rent right back up to well, why are we here? <laughs> purpose and get back to that. So um, typically I start with the weather and I would tell you it's beautiful here. So I hope you were enjoying a beautiful day there. Uh, there is another volcano that went off in Japan, which shot up pretty high. And it's colder than what we want for this time of the year. This is heading toward the spring equinox in the southern hemisphere where I'm at. And so it should be getting warmer, but it's not quite yet. It's gotten colder last night than it has in a while. So watch your own weather and pay attention to what's going on in your um, 
back part of the world. And as I like to say, stay off the beaches. Um, this is a time to be inland and high. Um, what else can I tell you? All right, let's start. Let's share some screens. Tee Let's start with, oh, this is cool. The guy who advises Bush. Bush. Ah, where is my head? Not Bush. You know, the new guy. <laughs> the other Bush. Trump. This is Steve Pichesnik. I think I'm pronouncing it right. Pichek, I think is really a problem. I, I like to show his partner here. I don't know who she is, but... She always has a Make America Great hat on. So they're fans of the Bushes. So he's going to give him the best advice he knows how to give him. Um, but I find, um, hmm, what can I say? I find um, his focus is very about, um, you know, respect for the man who is very clear about his lines of alliance and allegiance to the country of America. Um, he looks at all the dirt that all of them have, and he's, I've, I've talked about him with Epstein. Um, but this is a report he's done after uh, Jim Bolton was fired um, by Trump. And he advises Trump, um, congratulations on that move, but also that uh, it is not in his best interest to start a war with um, Korea, uh, China, uh, or Afghanistan, and that we don't need war. And so he represents a voice of the what, what I call the white hats that um, make this very interesting time to um, just compare, right? Uh, and, and I start with this one because it's really what led to this next story um, that made me go, hmm, something else is going on. Let's see, I'm trying to figure out a way. There's got to be a way that I can get to it without changing pages. But I don't see how. Ah, well, here's the next one I want to talk to you about, but it won't let me flip. Come on. Okay, I just have to go back in again. So what's happening over the Pentagon? Now, this happened December 19th, 2018. And I want to make it as big as possible. I'm going to play a little of it. So hopefully I don't have the noise going on in the background. I'm just going to turn it off. And this is a regular citizen. This is a guy driving, and I have been down this path, so I, I'm familiar with where he's at. I'm going to move forward just a little bit where he's getting around the corner, and you can see. Oh, that's a reflection of his glass, sorry. <laughs> it's here. We're seeing the images of the um, good passive reflection, again, reflection. It is a very big, uh, oh, that was part of it there. Um, he is Richard Wilson, 192 describers, 234,000 hits. And he says, for all media inquiries, please contact me. Um, he didn't stop because you can't stop along that part of the freeway. And um, But it it's really probably shows best when you're, you can see the clip of it when you're driving up and you can see there is a large structure over the para, uh, the Pentagon. And, you know, I pull that up because everyone who was paying attention in that part of the world is, is going, okay, we get it. And I heard this story and heard about this story um, from the next one I want to show you, the ExoPolitics interview with um, my brother, Alfred. Uh, Alfred is um, reading his book, The Omniverse. And Alfred is um, a judge, attorney, uh, living in Canada, both U.S. and Canadian citizen, native um, Inuit background, history. 
And his book Omniverse is talking about a multiverse world where uh, he <laughs> tells a story in this interview, which is really a very good interview and probably the best one I've heard of, about his story. And it's um, relating to when he had his alien visit or his, um, try not to call them aliens, like calling them niggers. So I'm like, okay, let me get the word right. Intergalactic visit. It was in 1974, I believe. The uh, guests, the galactic guests, came with a book that he had written uh, in 2004. But the, he, they had the book. They time traveled, got his book, and came back and said, hey, we know about your book, and you're going to write this, and you'll get the story. And the Omniverse um, sounds like a great place, a place we all want to be to and evolve into and mature into. And, you know, I was like, yay, great. This is good news. We're getting to the Omniverse. Well, we're going to survive this mess that's heading our way. And then it occurred to me time. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I was having a conversation with um, my brother, Gary, who I interviewed a couple of weeks ago, and is a baker here, and been a chef for 30 years, and has had his own um, uh, contactee experiences. And um, his knowledge in Kali Yuga is um, what reminded me, oh, right, there's that other part. <laughs> there's another part of the story. And, you know, it's so comfortable to stay in one belief system and go, okay, they've got the answers. Let's stick with Christianity. They got an end time story. They got a beginning story. They got a how to live story. And this is what happens if you don't do it their way story. And you can start challenging the stories that come up, but um, you'll find that it's a nice closed container. And there's clues, there's references to the Nephium and different alien groups, excuse me again, the alien language, um, that have um, come in and been a part of this planetary experience. Um, but it, they remind you about time. And the Kali Yuga is the shortest uh, time frame um, because it's the hardest time frame. And uh, getting through it, uh, at the end of that is an extinction experience. And it's not about saving um, the planet with, you know, less straws or less carbon, because it's at one level, we are just speeding it up. Um, at, and at some levels, we are kind of protecting it, uh, which I've talked about somewhat in the chemtrails that is protecting us from seeing what's coming our way and blocking the sun and blocking um, what's going on. So it is um, one of those, okay, well, these guys say this and those guys say that, and who are we to believe? Uh, I suggest you look at all of them and find out who, how many uh, stories are out there and which ones resonate with you. Uh, everybody has a Adam and Eve story, kind of a creation story. And they're um, interesting to compare notes to and some that overlay. And one of the things I think that's really important to remember is that the um, winners of wars are the ones that write history and they get the privilege of writing history. So um, the challenges is then to go back and go, well, what did the other guy say? And I came across a post um, from Decoder on Twitter, and he was talking about the Tower of Babel and the from the loser's perspective and what they were trying to do and how um, the winners just destroyed them. For And remember, the Bible says they were pursuing knowledge and trying to unify on the planet what I would call a slave revolution or um, trying to um, move forward and gain knowledge of the species. So we haven't been able to rebuild the Tower of Babel, but it did occur to me, it's not a bad idea. Maybe we should. And what would that look like if we tried to come together? 
And I think the closest experience I've had to it is the um, Burning Man, where people come together. And it's not languages, it's art that brings them together. Um, I'm going to show you a picture of the Kali Yuga. I want you to see that. Boom. Let me do this again. One more page. So the interesting part of that was that the my conversation last night, it doesn't really matter what we do. Um, we are um, subjected to this experience of the planet. Okay, is that coming up? There we go. And see the Kali Yuga is the uh, position in red uh, at the bottom and, and it, the cycle of the yugas. And so we are still in that and we're probably right at the middle spot where if they say the shit hits the fan, but it's only 500 years. So they're like, okay, can we make it 500 years? So as we um, compare notes and look at the omniverse language and the omniverse message is really um, we've survived without starting World War III, at least up into this day. And we've got uh, Steve advising Trump not to do it. However, if you also look at what's um, going on in Hong Kong, um, there the protests are gotten so much smarter. And they are putting together um, music, organized. And remember, these are the most intelligent folks on the planet. <laughs> And I have to say that because it's um, it's an, it's a conflict of watching intelligence being wasted for violence. And and they the language of the song is about we need to fight. And we'll, they don't talk about death, but they need to fight for their freedom. And they are fighting for their freedom. They're, they're trying to keep from being extradited back to China where they know they're not going to be seen from again. So, you know, I'm, I'm right there with them. And I know I was hearing Les Miserables uh, songs playing when during the protests that I've been watching. But now they've kind of crafted their own same musical themes that are going through in there. But again, these are smart people uh, trying to fight for their lives and using the best they know in technology to do so. And um, because of that, I, I was quite impressed and just went, oh, all right, this is how uh, the smart kids are doing it. Um, let me show you something else. So I want to go to what are, what are the smart people doing and where are we ranking in that? And um, as an American, I have to check for myself. And let's just look at the list, shall we? This is, can I have to go this way to scroll? So who's at the top of the list? Hong Kong, followed by Singapore, South Korea, and then Japan, um, China, Taiwan. Italy, first in Europe, and then Iceland. Mongolia, which we never hear much about. Switzerland, Austria. Luxembourg, Netherlands, Norway, United Kingdom, Belgium. Yeah, we're not in the first 20. Uh, Canada, Estonia, Finland, Germany, Poland, Sweden, Andorra, which I have no idea where it's at. Um, Australia, Czech Republic, Denmark, France, Hungary, Latvia, Spain. And behind Spain, here comes the U.S., 31. We're ranked 31. And then below, then I start looking at the countries I travel. Israel, hmm, 95. Uh, Vietnam, 94. Uh, Ireland, Malaysia, Cambodia, Thailand, one of my favorite spots. And then Ecuador, where I'm currently at. Um, so Laos is up there and anybody else traveling. So I want to just Philippines moves down on the list, Honduras, uh, African nations, um, Benin, where I want to travel to bottom of the list, equatorial Guinea, number 43rd ranking. Um, but that's still much more than 43. So just looking at intelligence and I, I always feel that 
intelligence is one of those important tools we need as a species to make sense of what we what's facing us. Um, and our governments have not ever cared about the poor, so we're that's not, not what we're talking about. Uh, but we are talking about who's going to make it through this next Kali Yuga phase, and it is not going to be an easy one. Um, so we we want to um, go go places where there's smart people. <laughs> so and, and at this stage of the game, be where you are loved and cared for, and people in an emergency will come and look after you. That's what kind of matters to me. It's like um, I choose my friends and my neighborhoods based on safety. And it, I'm about to be 60 soon. So I'm like, oh, I got to think about that, especially as I went dancing last weekend and it took me three days to recover. My knees were like bending and going out on me. And I went, oh, my God, I don't know if I'm going to make it. How? So um, that's what's happening with the universe, the omniverse. Um, and I know right now, uh, Alfred is very happy and I want to interview him and talk to him. And one of the things I find that's uh, most um, concerning is, is when I talk to my other friends that have the other perspectives from other belief systems are going, well, we don't think that's going to work either. And what are they going to do and how are they going to help? They may rescue you and get you out. And Alfred uh, is a fan of Wes Penray and I've read Wes, Wes Penray's work. And Wes Penway is a voluminous work. And, I, you know, me, I go to the cheat sheet. I'm like, okay, let's get to the summary in the back. What's the bottom line? Wes sees three options for our planet. Um, a first, a transhuman AI run planet. Second, uh, much like the Matrix. Um, second is a planet that uh, we will move into a... Um, higher dimensional experience. And there's a lot of support for that because there's a lot of support that the planets we're going to split and we're, we're not support other voices saying that we're going to split and go into two separate planets. And if you are awake enough to evolve to the next level and bump up, congratulations. Uh, if not, you just keep working on your karma, baby. You keep coming back and reincarnating and working through your stuff. So that's good news. Um, but the extermination event on the planet is for the planet's healing because the planet, Gaia, Terra, uh, is alive and well too. And we have just kind of caused her a little bit too much. Uh, you know, it is her normal time for her evolution. So we, I don't want to take the blame. I don't want to give the blame. I just want to state it's happening. We don't control that. It's not in our realm to control, even with intergalactic help. They can get us off and they can take us somewhere else um, and they could heal some of the planet when it gets past this event. But I think at this stage in the game, it's a rescue mission for if you had contacts and if you've been a conduct can con contactee versus an abductee, um, you may have an option to get out. So uh, the other thing West Penray say is get out. <laughs> and he's like, you can help the planet heal. And so I was kind of like, okay, I'm going for number two. And with a three option ready to go, have my bags packed to get off the planet. And uh, I've always been looking for my home planetary connections uh, and finding out where those are. And I have been told and I have seen from my own experiences and went, hmm. They're blue. Okay. I mean, it's short changing colors and stuff. Stop wearing white, wear blue. But it is looking for those other options. As a friend of mine said, you know, it's not a black and white world. There's a lot of gray. <laughs> and so, and there's other doors in that gray and there's other openings. And because of that, we either, we as a species have tended to shut down and choose A or B. It's got to be one or the other. Our culture reinforces that. Our religious belief system said good or bad. There's not gray. And I'm like, but there is a lot of gray. And being limiting ourselves to that is uh, the dumbing down of our species that they've tried to keep doing. So when you hear someone give you two options, it says everything. No, there's a third option and probably a fourth. So always consider that. All, and no matter, especially when you're in relationship matters and you have to love me or you don't love me. Well, but I love you and, or this is not acceptable and I love you. Um, so don't be locked into the box of language that there's only two choices. Remember, there's always more. 
Um, okay, so what else do I want to add to our conversation today? Oh, yeah, let's talk about this. Alcyon. Alcyon is a, a god. Uh, where is the Alcyon description? There it is. Alcyon is a star, excuse me, designated. Am I sharing this with you? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, uh, in the star system constellation of Taurus, 440 light years from the sun, brightest in the Pleiades Coben cluster, which is a young cluster about 100 million years old. Uh, number of female uh, fainter stars, there are a number of fainter stars very close to Alcyon. Um, but Alcyon has gotten a lot more history. And this is a long one. Her law, um, Sovereign Kai, there is the page. And this is a couple that do um, futuristic looking at prophecies. Um, and they're not in a good mood either. <laughs> <You know? laughs> there's, there's, there's two types of YouTubers on, I've noticed, you know. Those are a few of us are going, oh dear, this is not looking good, y'all. And the rest are going, you know, we're going to get rescued and it's happy. And there's other things to focus on. And you can focus on many things. There's, it's a, an amazing experience to where our minds will take us. Can remember, our thoughts create our reality. And I'm going, hmm, well, how come I can't control the reality then? Because there's other people thinking that's why we're not alone in our thoughts. And when there's a collective of thoughts, and that has been the case, and time is a, um, it's one of those variables you can't really probably mess with too much since we're in a time-based system. But you can go up and down the timelines. And so you can go ahead in time and look at things and look at your future personally or collectively and see what is in your timeline. And I recommend you do so. Um, there's many different methods to do that. Um, I'm kind of a chart person that looks at the past and says, why did you come? Um, versus the futures, which would be anywhere from a tarot reader and or a forecast in a third dimension astrology, even though my third dimension astrologers are, are kind of like, eh, eh, things are changing too much. And we have um, free will, well, unlimited free will anyway. Um, we have liberty, right? I like to say we don't have freedom, we have liberty. So we have liberty to move and change our own personal destinies, but not... Um, the freedom to change the collective unless we move as a collective. And and on a collective level, it's voting, it's politics, it's um, food and health changes, it's our buying, it's our strategies on where we go and worship and partner with. And then there's a omniverse level and there are the universe level and we are part of that system. So we have liberty in our scope of reality. And as much as we can move, uh, we should. Um, uh, but the end of the age is what Alcyon's uh, story is about. And I invite you to spend, it's an hour. Um, it's a deeper look. It's an understanding of the alignment of the stars and why they're happening. And what's so cool is that most of the astronomical figures that we see with stars and planets and Nibiru and the, or the ninth planet coming through have been made into allegories of stories so that simple people could understand. Because every time there is an extinction experience on the planet, it is those that are closest to nature that survive. They are the ones that can uh, go underground, connect with the earth. If they survive the coal, they come out and they have to start all over again. Now, what's interesting is uh, Alfred talks about in his interview is that there are children now born with a sixth strand of DNA. So if you remember any of your biology classes, we have 12 strands of DNA, but two were only that we could see active. Uh, Alfred says, because we got dumbed down as a species because we lost the war. And so we became a prison planet because of that. And we had to start all over. However, they did not take our 
free will and our ability to climb out of this hole of darkness and the ignorance that has kept us in bound in chains and subjected. Um, so we can learn, but learning in prison, <laughs> I feel I've gotten my a multi-degree on my prison experience on this planet. And it's, um, I'm ready for my escape. So I'm looking for, how do we get out of this mess? Uh, and focusing on that next. Um, but looking at the star, uh, it is really the story, the metaphysical story of what is happening on the planet and the alignments. Now he's very, uh, this is a researcher and it really broke my heart when he brought pink in um, as one of the um, tellers of the story. Um, and he, and Hollywood always has to do that. God is a woman, the movie, uh, where's the pink part? Um, he really, the storytelling is the important part of this. And it's being able to use the highest popular musicians because those are the ones that will be remembered in history. And when you see them perform, and there's enough video out there of showing them, um, let me demo that. I'm moving back to me nothing to share, doing this position and identifying with their allegiance. And I didn't want to believe that when I first heard it. And I went, oh, okay, there's enough of them. There's, all right, all right. there's enough going on. And it's too unusual of a symbol to um, ignore. And there are other connections. You go, all right, all right. What are you telling me? That's the other important part. What are you saying? Um, so when you look at that aspect, then you go, oh, okay, there's some lineups of this. And what the story they tell you is what's coming down. That's it, period. This is the best video. I know the Alcyon video, which is in the link on your Patreon channel that you can get that. Um, what else? All right. So what I want to... <laughs> Ah, the sister. I met this sister I, um, while I was in Bali. She is a yoga instructor for a uh, yoga bar in there and just a brilliant sister. And I've enjoyed uh, working with her and her taking her classes. But it was her quote that really spoke out to me. And she, uh, let me make it bigger. Uh, she said, you've seen what happens when we dance, sing, and play. Now watch what happens when we get still. When we as a species can meditate and work as a collective, that's when stuff happens. And I interviewed Kamal um, Abayomi um, last week, and he was um, an amazing brother who really has gone deep just as he is. And, and another brother that was born woke and had parents that intentioned his life and gave him the best um, name to move forward and in, in what his purpose was and what his, his destiny was. And it is bringing the arts in, to our people and to the world. And when he did Black Divinity Meditation Day, it was a double entendre. I heard about it from the Black groups that I belong to. Um, but he also, it was really about the Blackness of, of going deep within ourselves. And I like to say, um, you want to see reality, you close your eyes. You want to see the illusion, you open them. And it is in that illusion that the, um, what we call this reality is about. Um, and it's been a, uh, a joy to go, well, well, I can create in this illusion. And as an artist, as a singer, as a writer, um, I have skills. And I remind the biblical story, those who have been given skills, you know, you get judged on, did you use them? <laughs> oh, I'm like, okay. I'm here. I got the camera, got the mic working. I'm trying to use them and share them. And the skills of telling a story and sharing stories with you is what I've enjoyed most. And for my own story, it was the answers um, for me that have given me that sigh, relaxed moment of, oh my God, I finally am getting the answers. We must be close to the end. <laughs> I'm like, 
finally, you know, at the end of the game when all the pieces start falling into place and I'm like, the puzzle's coming together. We're almost done. Has been the, uh uh-huh. Oh, (laughs) Oh, it's almost done. Okay. What's next? And I'm a futurist. You can check my butt cheeks and I can show you. I remember I do butt readings just a little bit. I can just do a little bit and tell you, are you looking at the future? You're looking at the past. If you're a past person, you're probably not even on my channel. So <laughs> bless you for even looking at the future. Um, but if you are a futurist, then it is about what have you designed for yourself? Because those are the planners. Those are the ones who are thinking about what's next. And I... I'm always doing that. <laughs> That's got to me. So what I want to share with you next, and um, the final piece I want to look at is the, come on, come on, baby. There's a little tool. I put this in the, um, this is from astro astrologyfutureeye.com. I wanted to give you that. It's a Chaldean name numerology. It's kind of a very old tool, um, Chaldean and Indian Vedic astrology uses this type of numerology and it really just takes your the name given to you at birth adds up the numbers and i'm going to chart like this and then you get um your name comes out so i'm gonna do my name right quick oh i've already got it in here phyllis wally i think that's the one i use i think oh actually phyllis serene wally was the best name it's funny um because i always change names based on a story I read years ago, an Australian um, fictional piece about uh, the Aborigines would change their name based on what they were working on in their life. So it was, if it was um, uh, Courage, which was what I was working on at the time, I changed my name to Courage and said, okay, I need to focus on that. And I, my sister Shana still calls me courage and I'm like, thank you. I still need to be reminded of that. Okay. So here's what I got. Find the love. My total score. Dream numbers. No, actually, I'm going to do this again because I think it, when I did it before I had a higher score. <laughs> I went, wait, what's the name that I should use? And I used it. Um, when I'm particularly looking at the name that I use for my website and I was considering changing my name at a time and see, right. So here's my use Phyllis Raleigh. My numerology store goes down. It goes to six. I'm like, Oh, teacher, counselor, influencer, um, dream numbers. Um, and when I use Phyllis serene, which was a combination of my, uh, dominatrix as I identified as Mistress Serene during those days. Um, and the score goes down even lower. So I'm like, I'm going to use Phyllis Serene Frawley. My birth name, Phyllis Marie Caves, is the, is the real one. 55 is a compound number, which gives me a 1. Leader, independence, and creative. Okay. Yeah, I can do some of that stuff. <laughs> I'm like, okay, do stuff. We go make things happen. I look at these and go, all right. And, and when I have to make a decision, do I go this way? Do I create? Do I take on that challenge? I look at it that way and go, let me use these tools that way and um, uh, make some sense of them. So that's what I wanted to give you for the report today. Um <clears throat> it's been a shaking experience for me. Um, I look at everything I learn and going, it's, uh, I'm, I'm using it to move me further down my goals, um, understanding uh, my role on the planet, what I can bring to the planet, what the planet is bringing to me, who do I need to avoid, who do I need to listen to, the lines, <laughs> pay attention to the lines. You want to see a lot of them before you start listening. And the other thing you need to look for is heart. And seeing heart is in the nostrils, generosity. And the left side of the face is going to be personal. The right side of the face is professional. So the bigger the nose, the bigger the nostril, the wide open nose, generosity. So you're looking for the strength of heart, 
when you commune with someone. So that's what I want to encourage you on today. It still is going to require a hell of a lot more discernment. I was also reminded, you know, this planet is Lucifer's planet, and he lost. <laughs> so he uh, was bound down, but he's coming back. Remember the story? He's coming back and gets loosed again. And uh, we've got a war still coming. So all the galactics that say they're coming back, okay, uh, duck is what I'm going to say for us that are here. And be careful of your alliances and ask their history and ask why are they here and what do they want. And if it's here to serve us, what's in it for them? Remember, good dominatrix always ask, what's in it for you? And so I want you to do the same. Always ask. And when you are offered at any level, anything, ask what's in it for you in front of them, not secretly behind your head, in your thoughts. Um, but ask so that you know and that you are empowered and can deal directly and honestly. Got it? Cool. Love y'all. Thank you. It's been a good day. It's been a good week. It's, there's more ahead and I will dig deep and share it with you. So see y'all soon. Peace out. And what else have I got to tell you? Um, meditation, men's meditation on Mondays. Uh, I'm going to do a live podcast on Wednesday here locally, but it will air on Thursday. Um, so you, you can look for that. That's going to be an interview with uh, High Priestess Jacqueline Omi McKenzie, who is the head of the uh, High Priestess for the Church of All Worlds. And we're talking about fear and dealing with fear and collective easing of fear. So I definitely want to share that with you and keep your heart strengthened. Love y'all.